Only problem, I bought it from a fake seller. Let's check something real quick. Man, they just shim this thing right in. This is my favorite test while walking property. Hello? Anybody here? It's James Daynard with Project RE, and we just bought another house. Uh, come take a look at it. So we are in the Blue Ridge neighborhood of Ballard. This is a great residential neighborhood outside the city of Seattle. Um, they have larger lots. They're very family friendly, lots of amenities, and we got some pretty cool views inside you can check out in a second. So we paid $1 million for this property, and we're putting in $175,000 into the renovation, and we're targeting an exit price of $1.75 to $1.8 million, and we plan on turning this thing in about six to seven months. The reason we could turn it in six to seven months is we're shrinking the scope of work. So as we get inside, I'm gonna walk you through the whole house um, and let you know what we're doing. So there's kind of two different plans that we can do on this. So we could take it to a 2.3 to $2.4 million comp. That's where we're gonna rebuild the whole house, take it to high-end finishes, and instead of spending the 175, it's gonna cost us about 500 grand. The reason we're going for the cheaper plan is because we're getting an overall better return. And in the current market conditions, we wanna get in and out of deals. The tighter your, your timeline on your deal, the less risk you have. And so for us to buy this property, do a light renovation and still rack a return in a smaller window of time makes more sense. So we're opting to not go for the super high end. I know everyone's been seeing me do high end flips the last couple of years. We're still doing them, but it's doing them on the right houses. So what we're doing here right now, we have a very cool traditional house that has really good architectural styles. On the outside, we're gonna leave the shake roof. We're gonna leave the siding design. We're gonna leave the millwork to tie in that old feel, but then we're gonna modernize the inside. So what we're doing here, the first thing is we have a blocked off, closed off house. Everybody's always trying to chase open the floor plan. Get it open concept, that's in trend. And that is true, except for some homes, like this one was, needs to be more traditional. Having formal spaces is actually a good thing. So we're not gonna wipe open the whole area, but we all we do wanna get more view, more natural light coming in. So we're gonna leave our living room on this section, and we're gonna open up our dining room wall through here. This is gonna allow, when you come in the front door, you're gonna see more of the view. So keep getting rid of the traditional space is actually getting us more view, it's gonna increase more profit. We're gonna add a full light door here to again capture the view. So we got a formal living, dining, and then we come into our kitchen, which is kind of a weird space. And as rehabs and flippers, we have to figure out how to work with spaces and not blow the budget. We have two options. Either one was to move the kitchen over here, which was gonna cost a ton more money, then we're gonna have to open up this wall, or we can work around and spend a fraction of the money. So what we're doing inside this kitchen to get it open, but get it more of a traditional layout, this ain't gonna work, is we're opening this wall. We're installing a big island here. We're gonna run our kitchen cabinets through this section, new dish sink, new dishwasher, new range, and then right here is where we got the oddness. So as, again, as flippers, we have to figure out the oddness without blowing the budget. We're gonna frame this wall down through here so we can straighten out our kitchen and add more rows of cabinets. And then we're gonna eliminate these windows and doors because they're not really functional. We don't need them for the house. We have two exterior doors here. We have uh, two in the basement, lots of flow in this house. By doing that, we can install a pantry through here to give the kitchen a little bit bigger feel because it's a little bit smaller. In addition to, we gain more kitchen space here and we can open this whole thing up. So the kitchen will be a lot better for resale and we don't have to spend a ton of money by just adding in this wall. Um, so again, as flippers, you wanna look for what is the best way to get your desired plan. It's not always about spending money. What can you work inside of on the walls that will save you a ton of cost? We got a powder room off the main that we're gonna do just a full update on. And then let's check out the upstairs. So upstairs, again, we got really cool architectural style that we wanna tie it all together. We're gonna do solid surface floors, hardwoods all the way up so it has a vibe when you come through. We wanna tie that in. The carpet kinda of dates the house. All new Craftsman rails are coming in and we're doing all solid surface floors. This technically is one of our, th it's our third bedroom of the fourth uh, that we're gonna be keeping. So we're gonna make this more of a office flex bedroom because we don't need the fourth bedroom for the comp. Our comp was a three bedroom, two bath. We're gonna be a four bedroom, three bath when we're done. Uh, but we're gonna make it more flexible. So we're gonna 
keep our closets. It's still a legal bedroom, but it could also be an office as well. Now, one thing that we are doing to keep the charm, uh, Megan, our listing broker and designer, talked us into, I was gonna re-dry wall this whole thing, but we're gonna paint this out and give it that shiplap feel to kind of tie in that character. Again, new drywall, it's really easy to be like, hey, let's just rip it out and put new stuff in. Everyone wants new. Whereas when you're in eclectic neighborhoods, keeping the charm goes a lot longer and sometimes ripping it out can be more detrimental. So always check your comps, see what the style trends are, and then keep the stuff that you can. We're even gonna repurpose some of these door handles into these over here just to give it that extra charm. People will pay for charm. They don't want all generic all the time. So as we come up through here, we have a three bedroom, one bath layout, which isn't great for optimal resale. Typically a big primary is gonna get you a lot higher dollar amount. So we wanna figure out how to make this into a formal primary with a bedroom and another bathroom here. So we're going from a three bed, one bath layout to a two bed, two bath layout. Good news is we got a bathroom right here. We're gonna be able to update it, new toilet, vanity, uh, tub, all new tile, give it some character. There's our main bath. Second bedrooms right off the bathroom, good for flow. And then as we go into our spaces, we have our third bedroom and our primary over here. We're gonna have to take away this third bedroom to get that bathroom space. And so as flippers, that's what we're looking in for. What can we cheat into? What can we take away that's not gonna reduce the comps? Again, we had a three bedroom comp, we have a four bedroom house, so we're okay there. We can eliminate that bedroom and add a bathroom and a closet in there and it will get us that optimal value. In theory, our comp at 1.75 did not have a primary bath. We're gonna have one. So it should give us a bump in pricing, but on our performer, we're keeping the same. So as we come through here, we wanted to utilize this space. Good thing is when you're carving into squared out rooms, it's a lot easier to lay out. So we're gonna put a door on this side, door on this side. We're gonna frame straight through a four by eight closet, good size closet. And then we're gonna put an oversized shower, six feet wide toilet, double vanity sink, and then we're gonna keep our view right off of our primary bath. Um, so now we've gone from a very tight living space, no bathroom, where the, the owner of the house has to go to this really small dinky bathroom to where they have their own in-suite. That makes, is a huge value increase when you're, when you're coming up with your floor plans and your layouts and your pricing. So let's check out the basement, because the basement typically, you don't care about the basement as much, right? It's just more space to live in, but this one, it's a little bit more special. It's got good flow, it's got good height, and there's a lot of good space that we can maximize the value with by incorporating it. So as we transition down, again, we have, currently in our layout, we have an open kitchen, living, dining, three bedrooms, two baths upstairs, and in the basement, as you come down, we have our two-car garage that we're gonna fully refinish with all new drywall, garage doors, um, uh, all new garage door openers, get it to a modern floor plan, but as we come down, this is where the good spaces are. This ceiling height down here is typically, we're like seven, eight feet. We're at 10 right now. That's great for resale. The bigger your space is in your basement, the more value you're gonna get. In addition to, we have full egress here. That's a big deal when you're looking at values of property. We can get right in and out. We can come through. It's not below grade. It's a walkout basement. Typically, a buyer's gonna pay you more for that. So down here, we're gonna be rewiring the whole house, installing can lights all the way through. We're re-drywalling the whole house. And then where the work is, is we wanna make sure that the flow has good space. And remember, we have a two bedroom up top, a third bedroom on the uh, kind of middle level, and then the fourth bedroom's down here. So we want it to feel really good because if the bedrooms are too chopped up, it's gonna confuse the buyer. So right now, we have our mechanicals in here. We have an oversized laundry, which is way too big. And there is a ton of wasted space. As flippers, we want to find the wasted space and maximize it. So what we're doing here is we, not, we need that third bathroom. We're gonna, we're gonna eliminate this door because we have a door on that side over there. If we did not have flow on the outside, we would be keeping this door. But we don't need two access points. We have one there. We're gonna eliminate this door, put a full bathroom in here. And then we're gonna put the laundry on this side of the wall and do a full mechanical laundry. So when you come down the hallway, you're gonna have your big bonus room, mechanical space, bathroom. And then in this section is where we're putting our big fourth bedroom. Currently, it's got a very small bathroom, very small bedroom. It would be more cost effective for us just to leave it the way it is, replace it, but then the resale is gonna be tight. Again, those three bedrooms, now we have a really small fourth bedroom. 
So by moving the bathroom over, now we have a legit fourth bedroom down here that's oversized with a big closet. We're gonna frame this through, nice oversized bedroom, bathroom, mechanical, living, and it has very good flow. So we're excited. We're gonna walk you guys through this project. As we get going, we close on this property in two days. We're gonna to try to rip through this deal in six months. Get it to market, maximize the deal, and get on to the next one. Hello, anybody here?